right, welcome to the show. This is the second episode. I didn't put one out yesterday. I'm sorry about that. Um, before we get started, hi mom. All right, now let's get straight to the news. All right, let's see what we've got here. It looks like it disappeared. My story disappeared. Oh, well, here's a different one. It'll still be the same. It'll still be the same because I've got the same um, same comments to add to this. It says here, uh, Nancy Pelosi compares Putin's invasion of Ukraine to Hitler's invasion of Czechoslovakia before World War II. All right, the other article was also having to do with Ukraine. She just had gotten back from um, a meeting in Germany, and um, I don't know. It's just a coincidence, I guess, that um, Mitt Romney's son works for an energy industry. He's on the board of an energy industry in Ukraine. You've got, I don't know, Joe Biden's son is also on the board of an energy company in Ukraine. Nancy Pelosi's son is also on an energy board in Ukraine. Um, I'll let you guys figure that one out, what you think of that. All right, let's see what we got next. We've got... Um, Oh, yeah, Georgia marks the statewide Ahmad Armory Day to honor the slain jogger who was 20 miles from his home, 20-something miles from his home, um, and he was also wearing um, hiking boots. He was the suspect that the police were looking for for burglaries in the area, um, but Props to him for being able to run, you know, um, 20 miles, 20 miles in his hiking boots, just jogging, minding his own business, wanted for several uh, burglaries, so, I don't know, that's pretty awesome that they're, uh, they're doing that, I wonder if a lightning bolt's gonna come and strike into that, like the George Floyd um, mural on the side of the building, lightning destroyed, alright, let's go to the next thing. This is horrifying. Um, it's uh, from NBC News. It says a girl brings a note to school, leading Las Vegas police to brother's body in the freezer. So let's dig into this one. A Las Vegas mother sent her daughter to school with a note begging to be rescued from an abusive boyfriend, which led police to find that the girl's little brother uh, dead in a freezer, authorities said on Tuesday. The note indicated that the mom was being held against her will Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Lieutenant Ray Spencer told reporters she also stated that she did not know the whereabouts of the pre her preschool aged child. When investigators got to the home on Saddlebrook Park Drive, the mother told them she feared her four-year-old son might be dead, officials said. During the course of that interview, she described that, uh, that she said she had undergone abuse by her boyfriend, who she lived with, and had been inquiring about the whereabouts of her child and believed her child may possibly be deceased. The boyfriend later identified as 35-year-old Brandon Toesland. Uh, had been preventing the mother from leaving the house or entering the garage. That's where the police found her son's body inside a freezer, uh, officials have said. The mother told her... The mother told the police that she had not seen her son since December 11th. 
The boyfriend, who is not the child, uh, the children's father, was arrested and booked on suspected kidnapping charge. His name has not been released. Well, 35-year-old Brandon Tosland. I guess his name has not been released because the investigation is ongoing. But um, looks like they already outed him. So, okay. All right, that's... Let's move on to something better than that. That's a horrible news. All right. Okay, um, inspired by the Canadian truckers. Uh, inspired by the Canadian truck protests, uh, People's Convoy heads to Washington. I guess they're going to be there for the um, Joe Biden's State of the Union. More than two dozen 18-wheel truckers, along with 50 pickups and recreational vehicles, left, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Aldelanto, California, about 80 miles northeast of Los Angeles. Okay, the self-styled People's Convoy is beginning an 11-day trek to the Beltway, a major highway encircling the U.S. Capitol to demand an end to COVID vaccine vaccine. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like an end to Maxine Waters, COVID Maxine Waters. She needs to lose her job. I'd like to see her end her job. Um, mask requirements. All right. And they're going to make a 2,500-mile journey. Why would they even put 4,000? Oh, I guess foreigners might be reading this. Okay. All right. So they can understand how far. All right. No, and then he would also like to end the emergency powers that the U.S. politicians have used to enact the pandemic. Um, 50 tactical vehicles were also approved to be placed. And Okay, yeah, the National Guard's going to be there. The National Guard's going to be there. The fences are going to be there. And they're looking for one guy to throw one soda can out of his window, and then he's a terrorist. Um, so just be careful guys if you're going if you're going and you're a trucker just be careful see what happened to the Canadians alright you should be able to peacefully protest you applied for a pass or a permit I think it was for 300 people or 1,000 people or so, something small. Let's just keep it small and keep it peaceful, okay? All right. Let's go on to the next thing here. Oh, yeah. Here's the... Uh, she's confident that the Capitol Security... Yeah. She's confident that it's going to be all right. Yeah. Oh, she says they have a good uh, handle on what the expectation is. Pelosi told reporters of the local law enforcement's preparations when asked about security considerations. I feel confident, she says. All right, there you go. There you have it. All right, this episode's short and sweet because I had a lot of complications. I had to, I had to overcome a lot of complications to get this episode out here. Um so let's see here. Let's go ahead and check out Today in History. Today in History. Let's see who was born today. Who was born? Okay, that... Yeah, Handel wrote a bunch of music, classical music. Mm, looks like nobody else was really born. Oh, the director of The Wizard of Oz... The Wizard of Oz, and also um, Gone with the Wind. He was born today, so all right, that's a good day. Good. Let's see what happened in the year 303. Oh, I went back, by the way, yesterday, in yesterday's episode, it said in 1970, um, Attila the Hun 
just went on a rampage, just destroying Italy. But uh, it did not happen. I went back today. Well, you could go look at yesterday's video or two days ago's video, and you'll see that yes, it in fact said that. Um, they must have they corrected it, so that's fixed. So. 1970, Attila the Hun did not invade Italy. Okay, all right, now, 1516, Habsburg Charles I succeeds Ferdinand in Spain. That might be important. Uh, Spanish explorer Francisco Vasquez de Coronado began, oh, begins his unsuccessful search for the fabled seven cities of gold in the American Southwest. 1574, the fifth <laughs> war of religions breaks out in France. They were having, I guess they couldn't figure out religion, so they had to have five, five wars by uh, 1574 to figure it out. All right, 1615, the Estates General in Paris is dissolved, having been in session since October of 1614. That was lasted a whole year whatever that was i don't know 1778 baron von steuben joins the continental army at valley forge yeah he's the guy that taught you to poop and pee way far away from your cooking and your hospital tents and stuff he, he taught him a lot of things i'm glad he came on board that was a good that was a good thing uh, 1821 Poet John Keats dies of tuberculosis at the age of 25. In 1836, the Alamo is besieged by Santa Anna. Remember that? You're supposed to always remember the Alamo. <laughs> oh, I remember. All right, 1846, the Liberty Bell tolls for the last time to more... George Washington's birthday. Yeah, it had a crack on it. I can't believe they rang the damn thing <laughs> for for all that time. It could have shattered. So I'm glad they quit ringing it. Um, they should have saved that a long time ago. Before that. All right. In 1847, forces led by Zachary Taylor defeat the Mexicans at the Battle of Buena Vista. I think that's a road in every subdivision. So that was that was a huge battle. It was in every subdivision. All right, uh, 1854. Great Britain officially recognizes the independence of the Orange Free State. Long live the Orange Free State. Ooh, wherever that's at, rock on, you Orange Free State, you. 1861, Texas becomes the seventh state to secede from the Union. Ouch. Yeah, they were Democrats back then. They wanted to keep the slaves. 1885, John Lee survives three attempts to hang him in the Exeter prison as the trap fails to open. If the trap door is not opening, why didn't they do it a different way? I don't know. All right, 1898, writer Emily Zola is imprisoned in France for his letter, Je Accuse, which he accuses the French government of anti-Semitism and the wrongful imprisonment of Army Captain Alfred, Will, uh, Alfred Dreyfus, Richard Dreyfus's great-great-grandpa, maybe, allegedly, could be, word on the street. 1901, Britain and Germany agree on a boundary between German East Africa and Nyasaland. Nias? Nyasaland. I don't know. Some place that does not exist anymore. 1904, the Japanese guarantees uh, Korean sovereignty in exchange for military assistance. 1916, the Secretary of State Lansing hints that the U.S. may have to abandon the policy of avoiding uh, entangling foreign alliances. We might have to, we might have to start getting entangled in some of that, I guess. 1921, an airmail plane sets a record, 
33 hours and 20 minutes from San Francisco, California to New York, New York. Thirty-three hour flight. They must have brought a couple of pilots on there. All right, you know, so they could sleep, fly, sleep, whatever. Nineteen twenty-six. President Calvin Coolidge opposes a large air force, believing it would be a menace to world peace. Drones, fighter bombers, that would never be a threat to world peace. Calvin Coolidge, you sir, were wrong. Well, maybe he was pretty much right, huh? 1936. In Russia, an unmanned balloon rises to a record height of 25 miles. Bull crap. Can you even breathe up there? Can you? I mean, I guess he must have bought a, brought a lot of uh, oxygen. I don't know. Probably. I didn't see it, so I call bullshit on that. 1938, 12 Chinese fighter planes drop bombs on Japan. Biological ones, maybe? Maybe it was SARS COVID 1, the very first COVID they ever invented. <laughs> 1942, a Japanese. Submarine shells an oil finery near Santa Barbara, California. The first access bombs to hit American soil. Dang you, tricky, dirty dogs. All right, what else? 1944, American bombers strike in the Marianas Islands bases only 1,300 miles from Tokyo. Uh, 1945, Eisenhower opens a large offensive on, in the Rhineland. 1945, oh, awesome. The United States Marines plant an American flag atop the Mount Sarabachi on uh, Iwo Jima. And then they reposed for it and they took another picture, that famous picture. All right, 1946, Japanese General Tomoyuki Yamashita is hanged in Manila in the Philippines for war crimes. 1947, several hundred Nazi organizers are arrested in Frankfurt by the U.S. and British forces. 1950, New York's Metropolitan Museum exhibits a collection of Habsburg art, the first showing of this collection in the U.S. I, I have no idea about that. 1954, mass inoculation begins as Salk's polio vaccine is given to children for the first time. Oh, when the vaccine was meant vaccine. Yes, I remember that. A couple of months ago, they changed the definition of uh, vaccine. All right. 1955, eight nations meet in Bangkok for the first CETO Council. I guess they sat down. Because it was it was a CETO council, so all right, nineteen sixty. Uh whites joined Negro students in a sit in in Winston Salem, North Carolina Woolworth store. Hey, remember that? That was the very first um what the hell? Chain store ever. Or something like that. 1964, the U.S. and Britain recognizes the new Zanzibar government. 1967, American troops begin the largest offensive of the war near the Cambodian border. 1972, black activist Angela Davis is released from jail where she was held for kidnapping. Con what? Okay. 1991, French forces. <laughs> French forces unofficially start the Persian Gulf War by crossing the Saudi the Saudi Iraqi border. They were the first ones in, guys. The French, the first physical troops, set foot in there, starting all this stuff a little too early, maybe like ten minutes too early. I don't know. Who would have thought French French 
people would ever be first at uh, going in there. Looks like that's everything that happened in history today. Um, Saturday, we got a good show. We do comedy on Saturday. Um, so Saturday's going to be a comedy show. I've got some special guests. I'm trying to make sure I've got... Um, Make sure I've got everything lined up for uh, interviews from abroad. I'm trying to set up interviews in actual Russia, um, in England, and in Israel. Um, so I'm going to get these interviews set up. I'm going to go ahead and get that going. Hopefully that will be coming soon. Uh, thanks. I appreciate you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I really need some I need some likes and shares and subscribes. Come on guys. All right, thank you.